This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917. On this week's episode of Nikon's Birding Adventures, we're at the Winter Wings Festival in Klamath Falls, Oregon. And the Klamath River Basin is one of the most diverse places in all of North America for birds, especially in winter. Such great diversity of habitats from juniper woodlands to oak chaparral to meadows to conifer forests to marshes. It really is a spectacular draw card for millions of birds. On this birding adventure, we're going to go looking for all the different species of owls of Klamath County. And we're also going to be looking for our golden bird for this week, the beautiful white-headed woodpecker. Let's go birding. The wondrous Klamath Basin straddles the Oregon-California border and is positioned between the Great Basin to the east and the majestic Cascade Mountains to the west. Mountainous areas include the legendary Crater Lake National Park, encircled by vast areas of pristine national forest. In birding terms, the basin is most famous for the open water and marshland habitats provided by Upper Klamath Lake and the Klamath Basin National Wildlife Refuge Complex. The stunningly productive refuges of Lower Klamath and Thule Lake host upwards of 80% of the migrating waterfowl that use the Pacific Flyway. And at certain times, accumulations of waterfowl can number over a million birds. These refuges also sustain one of the densest concentrations of wintering raptors in the country. In fact, the basin hosts the largest wintering concentration of bald eagles in the lower 48 states, which together with the wintering waterfowl makes for one of the greatest avian spectacles in all of North America. Every year on President's Day weekend, hundreds of birders flock to the Winter Wings Festival produced by the Klamath Basin Audubon Society and participate in educational field trips and engaging lectures. The festival offers the very best opportunity to explore the region, tick off new life birds and meet local birding experts, all in just a few days. And if you're looking for a great place to stay, the Running Y Ranch Resort offers some of the finest birder-friendly accommodation in the region. This is what draws thousands of birders to the Klamath River Basin every single winter. An avian waterfowl spectacle like no other. We're talking 20 to 30,000 white-fronted geese over here. There's snow geese, Ross's geese. There's probably 30,000 tundra swans over here. An incredible spectacle right before our eyes. And we're not the only ones taking advantage of this avian spectacle. Bald eagles in their 40s and 50s are right here in front of us on the sick and the injured and taking them out from the rest of the flock. And you'll see three or four or five bald eagles on a single goose or a single duck. It's akin to what happens on the African Serengetis where you've got prides of lions and hyenas feeding on a kill during the migration season with the wildebeest. This is the North American avian equivalent of that spectacle in Africa. About this time of year, we probably should have 30, 40,000. It'll get up to two or 300,000, even maybe a million before they disperse in late April, early May. Stick with us, folks, as we explore this incredible region. 
This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917. And by Hobie Mirage Drive Kayaks. Enjoy nature effortlessly. And sponsored in part by Wild Birds Unlimited Nature Shop. And by The Ledge, extreme gear for the next step. So this is the annual Owl Prowl at the Winter Wings Festival and we're at Klamath Marsh, an incredibly scenic winter wonderland. And this afternoon and tomorrow morning, we're joined by Kevin and Harry to go on an Owl Prowl, looking for birds like great gray owls, possibly a pygmy owl. Who knows, we might even see a sawwit owl, maybe tonight, but it's going to be awesome. Kevin tried calling in a great grey owl. We were amazed to hear one answer in the distance. But unfortunately for the owl prowl group, it did not make an appearance. But great grey owl expert Harry Fuller gave the group some excellent insights into this mysterious and enigmatic bird. They're an amazing bird. They're the tallest owl in North America, but they're mostly feathers. So they're not heavy duty killers. They eat little mammals lots of little mammals. So they need a big forest to nest in and they need meadows nearby full of voles or mice to eat. Behind me is the habitat of the American Dipper, one of the only songbirds in the world that actually forage for their food underwater and they've got some very unique adaptations to do this. They have a nictitating membrane over their eyes which allows them to see perfectly underwater. They also have these unique scales that cover their nostrils when they dive for food. And lastly, their oil glands produce more oil than other birds, allowing them to stay warm in these frigid waters. What a spectacular bird of these mountain streams, the American Dipper. Now there are several species of dippers worldwide and some in South America have got white on them. Others, the European dipper has also got white on it with a blackish kind of body or grayish body. But this one is very drab in color, but definitely not drab in its habits. They nest under structures like bridges. And one of the coolest things you'll notice is every time that they blink their eyes, you'll see this little white eye ring. You won't see it unless they blink their eyes. A spectacular bird, the American Dipper. Northern Pygmy Owl. Harry's found a Northern Pygmy Owl just sitting in the tree, this ponderosa pine. So finally, our owl prowl at Klamath has yielded a filmable owl. We've got a northern pygmy owl sitting in beautiful light on this limb overlooking the river. And I'm filming him right now. What a beauty, huh, Harry? They're great. They're only about six inches tall. They're the smallest owl that lives in the northwestern part of the US, but totally ferocious. They'll catch birds two to three times their size for prey. Uh, so all the birds are very aware when there's a pygmy owl around. It's amazing, you know, we've just been filming a pair of American dippers and Harry saw this guy just fly across the river and he's like, whoa, pygmy owl. Let's try stalk him and get a little bit closer if okay. we can. Awesome. What a magnificent owl, northern pygmy owl. Very small owl, and look when he turns his head, you're gonna notice he's got these false eyes on the back of the head. And these small owls have evolved to develop those false eyes so that a predator will not be able to take them by surprise because it'll think that that owl's already seen it. 
what you'll notice when looking at pygmy owls, whether it's ferruginous pygmy owl or this northern pygmy owl, is the size of their feet. They've got really, really big feet in proportion to a bird that's only about that big. So they are incredible little birds. Sit there very voracious and he's just waiting for a little songbird or a little passerine to fly underneath or fly past and he's gonna jump off that perch, go out and grab it. Spectacular bird. We're watching this northern pygmy owl and we've got a nice little group of common golden eye as well. One of North America's most beautiful ducks, especially when it's in breeding plumage. This time of the year in winter, they come down to the Klamath region. The young males more resemble the females and are not as brightly colored as the males. Look at that beautiful golden eye on these males right in front of us here. Stay with us as we take you further into the birding the wonderful, spectacular scenery of the Klamath River Basin. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. We're at Crater Lake National Park, and this behind me, I think, brings new meaning to the term snowed in. Almost 8,000 years ago, a 12,000 foot high volcano collapsed causing this 2,000 feet deep crater lake. This water is amongst the clearest water of any lake in North America. And I'm standing at one of the snowiest inhabited spots in the whole of America. Crater Lake is truly a natural wonder. This is Birding from the Edge. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917, and sponsored in part by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and by the Running Y Ranch Resort, your birder-friendly resort accommodation. This deafening sound of geese coming behind me is a massive flock, 20,000 strong of snow geese, mixed in with some tundra swans and some white-fronted geese as well. But to see 20,000 snow geese in one flock is absolutely spectacular. We're at Thule Lake and this place is just inundated with swans right now. At the turn of the 20th century, snow geese numbers had plummeted in all of North America. So much so that in 1916, the hunting of snow geese was entirely banned. Right up until 1975, when population numbers began to increase again. Snow geese are doing very well today, thanks to these flooded agricultural fields. And it's one of the few examples where the impact of man has had a positive influence on the population of a bird species. Yeah, the Klamath Basin is a really fascinating place because of the migrations that occur coming through here, like the tundra swans, the snow geese, and the Ross's geese as they're staging and moving through. And in, in what's definitively winter sometimes when they start to arrive, but it's really for them early spring as they're moving through and heading north. And then we also get them on the return trip in the fall. Uh, and then during the summer, it's just as exciting because of all the nesting shorebirds, avocets, black-necked stilts, things that are really unique and just in these wetlands all over the place. I would estimate we had 20,000 birds in the air at one time. We call it the liftoff, and they do it quite often. They'll lift off, they'll circle around for 10, 15 minutes, and then they'll all come back, landing back into the same field there where they're feeding. The inevitable consequence of such huge numbers of geese 
means that there's also going to be large numbers of predators. And right here is an example of a kill or a wounded or sick snow goose that's fallen prey to one of the many bald eagles around the lake. Many spectacular liftoffs of snow geese occur when one or more bald eagles swoop in hoping for an injured or a slow snow goose that they can pluck from the rest of the flock. Watch carefully as this bald eagle comes in from the left hand side and disturbs the entire flock hoping to make a kill. It's really fascinating being in the basin because we get both snow geese and Ross's geese in really good numbers and so having been from the east coast Ross's goose was kind of a grail bird for me when I first moved here and then at one point with my kids we were in the middle of a flock of 10,000 Ross's geese and it was just kind of otherworldly and we also have the blue morph uh, snow geese and Ross's geese even come through and I know at least for Ross's geese the blue form is extremely rare and we've had one here the last two years, I haven't seen one this year, but we've had a pure blue form Ross's goose. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917, and by Lake of the Woods Mountain Lodge and Resort, and sponsored in part by Manfrotto, complete solutions for photographers and videographers. Visit manfrotto.us, and by Pelagic Polarized Sunglasses. This is the home of Jerry Hill, and he's a local Klamath Falls birder. He's provided us with a bird hide to try and get footage of white-headed woodpeckers. Now there's only one pair of white-headed woodpeckers in this whole area, so we've got to be fairly lucky. We've got a whole lot of feeders set out in front of the blind here with suet, which is rich in fat. And these woodpeckers and a lot of the other birds love feeding on suet, especially in the winter times, so that they can build up their fat reserves. Three of the four nuthatch species occur in the Klamath area and we had great views of the red-breasted nuthatch on the Isle Prowl and both white-breasted and pygmy nuthatches made regular appearances at the feeder. Man, Jerry's place is birdie. There's so many birds coming in here. We've got lesser goldfinch, some really good woodpeckers, stunning views of northern flicker and great, great views of downy woodpecker as well. There's some chickadees, we've got mountain chickadees coming into the feeder there. Beautiful mountain chickadees. And now we're waiting for white-headed woodpecker. And uh, it's pretty cold out here, it's probably 38 degrees, 36 degrees right now. And we're just gonna wait, this is gonna be our home until we find this woodpecker. Oh yes, chestnut back chickadee. Got chestnut back chickadees on the feeders. This is a really good bird. Jerry was telling us to watch out for this because they've been seen this year in fair numbers in this part of the region of Oregon. But it's a very, very rare bird for this area. Oh my gosh. Why did it woodpecker just landed on the suet feeder right in front of us? Oh my gosh. What a spectacular bird. This is actually the first time that I'm seeing this bird. And I've been waiting here for three, maybe four hours. And finally this bird has showed up. I'm so excited. What a magnificent species. You know, I've been to Oregon before, once before, and I missed this bird. So, wow, to see it so close, it's got to be 15 yards from me. Just sitting on the suet block, just feeding. Yes, white-headed woodpecker. Thank you.
you, Jerry. Jerry, in true Oregon-style hospitality, provided us with his house to film from the blind and try and find white-headed woodpeckers. We were successful and it was awesome to see these birds coming into his feeders along with all the other variety of birds. But I really want to find these birds in the wild. So we've come to this forest and we're going to try and see if we have any luck. They've got a very, very distinctive call. It's this high-pitched call that you can hear calling. And uh, that normally signals that they're around. Otherwise, they're not very conspicuous birds. They can be very quiet if they're not calling because they don't tend to knock off bark like other woodpeckers. They tend to kind of just pry the bark when they're feeding. So very, very quiet woodpeckers unless they're actually calling. Yes, we've got white-headed woodpecker right on the other side of the snag. Yes, right at the top of the spiral-like snag. We've got a white-headed woodpecker just sitting clasping onto the side of this snag. What a truly spectacular bird, white-headed woodpecker. One of these true specialists of the American West, these high mountains, and they specialize in these pine forests. The only bird in North America with a black body and an entirely white head. What a magnificent bird. White-headed woodpecker, our golden bird for this episode.